Dr. Vinay Prasad here from the University of California, San Francisco. I've got a new video. It's called How I Deal with the Haters. Now, someone who works with me saw some of the Twitter response to my last video, and they suggested I make this video to show how I deal with what they consider to be hate and haters. So let me talk about that. My last video, of course, was 20 things I learned from publishing 300 papers. And I personally found it quite funny. I thought there were many pearls in there, such as if your mentor doesn't have 10 papers, your mentor needs a mentor and you need a new mentor. I thought that was a good one, but I got mostly positive support for this. You know, 97% of the replies, the retweets, people loved it. They thought it was hilarious, particularly those of us who spent a lot of time publishing papers. But there were 3% of people who didn't like it and they, they really got angry. And they engaged in the classic playbook of online hate, which is they took a little screenshot of it and they posted that and they said, look at this bastard. Dr. Vinay Prasad doesn't include authors on the paper if he has to type in more than four authors into the submission portal. Well, you know, I, I wish that I could exclude people if I'm punching in more than four authors on that submission portal, but of course I cannot, and I don't do that. And um, it was one of the stupidest things I've ever read because you have to be borderline illiterate or unable to read to actually take that away from my thread. And also the other crazy thing about it is you think I'm submitting these papers? No, I'm having other people submit these papers. I'm not doing it myself. So what is the playbook of an hater, which is that um, they, they make it seem like you're a bad person, you're a bad co-author, you're a bad mentor, you're evil. And who are these haters? Well, I think the other thing that worth noting is that in the world of the online, these haters are the same people. They're the same people in a certain clique, the same sad online group of friends. And they gain status in that sad online community from hating on somebody else. So I think we have to kind of appreciate that. I think the other thing we have to acknowledge is that they're often in a bad emotional place. I think they're frustrated with something else in their life and they're going online to look for the latest thing to feel angry about. And it may not be me and my little video in some tiny corner of the internet, but it could be one of the many other outrages in the world. And there's always something to get so worked up about that you wanna fire off some angry tweets. They're not very successful. I think that's part of what annoys people about my little thing. Um, you know, in their own career, they're not very successful. They're not doing a good job or they're feeling frustrated with their own promotion. I think a lot of people feel that. And I think if you do a thread about how many papers you publish, people are gonna take it a little bit to heart if they're feeling frustrated. The other thing is some of these people are repeat customers. I think we have to acknowledge it's the same 20 people. They're angry at me about one of my views on some other topic, my view on some cancer drug, my view on some clinical trial. They're angry with me on my, on my med page editorial and they're angry about this video. They're just like habitually angry with me about what I say. You'd think they'd have the wherewithal to no longer follow me so closely, but let me promise you, no one follows you more closely than your haters. Even your fans sometimes get bored with you. So you gotta consider who these people are. And I think mostly they're a sad bunch. What do haters do? They assume you're a bad person. They assume that whatever their disagreement with you is, it represents moral or character failings on your part. They depersonalize you. You're not a real person to them. You're just a two-dimensional caricature of yourself on the internet and they can really hate you and, and hit you as hard as they want and, and you're nothing to them. You're not even a human being. Um, Smart people, smart people in response to seeing hate like this, they don't wanna comment. And that is why you know I don't like Twitter as much and I don't look at it as much as I used to. I used to get people like my former colleague, Adam Sifu, I used to get people like that and I used to see them have long thoughtful threads on some issues with some jokes. They pushed on some ideas in ways that I hadn't read before and I enjoyed that, but nobody wants to do that anymore. Why? Because there's always gonna be some dum-dum out there who misconstrues what you say and comes up with this elaborate fantasy. The fantasy in their mind is that I have excluded authors because I was too lazy to put them in the portal. Well, that would be the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. No one could possibly get away with doing that. Um, humor is lost. And I think interesting ideas are lost from Twitter as a result. And so I think haters actually, they poison the environment for lots of other people. And I think I've seen that. And I think that's why a lot of us have moved away from Twitter. That's why I started doing podcasts and do these videos, because I think it's a better way to try to reach people in a normal way where we can all get some enjoyment out of this. You don't have to listen if you don't like it. And haters, they often don't make it through hour two of my plenary session podcast. So how do I really deal with the haters? I guess because the truth is I, maybe this person felt like that I don't get as bothered as they might if they were in the similar situation. That's probably true. I don't get that bothered. And in fact, almost nothing bothers me that much anymore. Um, why do I feel that way? I guess I have perspective. I guess I know and I have a sense of why they're behaving the way they're behaving. 
And I think that I also realize that nothing will ever change their mind and they're just stuck in their own intractable misery. And I happen to be a convenient punching bag for the day, so be it, but tomorrow it'll be someone else and someone else. And we all feel like we're uh, the protagonist of our own dramas, but we're just tiny bit players on the stage of life. Um, I think the other part is that, um, you know, I don't really care what anyone thinks of me, uh, frankly. And uh, I have internalized that to a deep degree, perhaps uh, too much, but I really don't care. Um, I think social media is poisonous and that the more you feel bothered by it, um, the more you are accepting the design of the people who made it. And I don't accept their design. I want to use what's good about it without getting drawn into what's bad about it. And so I'll make a joke or two. I think I made a joke to someone who said something like this, that uh, the only people I exclude from the paper are those without a sense of humor. And uh, I don't know if they fully got it. Um, but, um, and then the other joke I made is that I, I thought the person's name was et al. And that's why I put it as et al on the thing. Um, but I, I try not to get too sucked in. There's no winning. Um, you'll just say your position and they'll restate theirs and it's the same usual division lines. Um, I think the other bit of perspective is when you're dead, no one will think about you ever again. It will happen rather quickly. And I think people like to say that, you know, they say some trite saying, which is like, when you're dead, the only people that will really care about you are your loved ones and they'll be the ones remembering you. And you know, the truth is that even they won't think about you that much. I mean, let's be honest, they're gonna forget about you in a short period of time as well. And they're the ones who are more likely to think about you than some average Joe on the internet. They're not gonna think about you even one bit. And your loved ones are gonna forget about you too and go on with their lives as kind of, you know, what you want for them. Um, and so what I think is that no one will think about you realistically, and you are just one person out of, you know, maybe 10 billion people who ever lived, and your contribution and impact on the world is almost infinitesimal. And if it were not for you, no one would really see that. So I think to have that kind of perspective, you'll realize uh, it doesn't matter if few people hate on you in one moment on some digital platform in an age of lunacy. Um, academic freedom. Now, that's what ca I care about more. And I'm really interested in academic freedom and, and why I had my thread was I thought it was humorous to me. I thought it was intellectually interesting to me. And I wanted to talk about it with some people who I thought might be interested with it. And so that's why I put it out and why I made the video. And academic freedom to me means the freedom to think what you think and say what you think and communicate what you think, the freedom to engage with ideas. And that's what I am interested in above all else, engaging with ideas. That's why I choose this job as opposed to other jobs where I could probably make a lot more money per unit time and utilize my talents in a better way for monetary purpose, but I won't have the pure freedom to think what I think all the time. And that freedom, it has to be now. I don't want this freedom when I'm done and I don't want some legacy when I'm gone. I'm not around to enjoy it. I want freedom when I'm alive. I want the freedom every moment to think what I think and say what I think to whomever I wish to say it. And I can't let these people, and I certainly won't let them, take that freedom away from me. It's the freedom of an academic. It's the only good thing about the business. The freedom is now. So we can't capitulate to these people. They're uh, obviously not worth capitulating to. They're worth mockery. And that's what they'd be treated with if they actually said some of these things in a real in-person session. If I gave that comment and, and somebody replied in that manner, they'd be laughed out of the room. And they'd be treated with, uh, I think, mockery and derision, which is what they deserve. Um, and I think the other thing that probably helps me is that I exercise a fair bit. And so the more you exercise, I think the more equanimity you bring to your day-to-day -day activities. And then the last thing, the last point I wanna make about the haters, which is the question of talent. I think people have their own talents. Um, I certainly don't have most talents. There's most things in the world that I'm not good at. Um, uh, but there are a few things that I am good at and I, care about those things. And I've tried to become better at those things and hone those things. And so I know what I'm not good at. And you don't see me doing videos on all the things I'm not good at. You don't see me talking about things I'm not good at. You don't even know what they are because I don't talk about it. I talk about the things I am good at, the things I hone my craft. I thought about my profession and my technical craft. And, and I feel like I'm pretty talented in that space. And so I know that there's nothing they can do to somebody with real talent in their own space. They can push you and mock you and laugh at you. But when you have real knowledge and talent um, on evidence-based medicine, cancer drugs, uh, that will always be useful to someone. And so, you know, say whatever you want. Uh, I'm probably gonna be okay. I'm probably gonna be okay. And um, you know, when I'm gone, you're not gonna remember me anyway. So that's it. That's how you deal with the haters. I mean, I guess I don't know what to say. Um, it's quite simple to me. I mean, the more you think about them, uh, the worse you are. And uh, they're thinking about you a lot. So I'm living rent-free in their mind. And um, I still think my thread is really funny. 
And the people who don't think it's funny, the people who take it too seriously, you know, the last tweet in my thread was that they're doomed, their career is doomed. It is doomed. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. If you read my thread and you think that I'm suppressing authors because I'm too lazy to put in the portal, you're not going to do well in this career. You don't have resiliency. You can't even have, you don't even have reading comprehension. You're not going to survive. You're, you're going to take so many things to heart. You're not going to be able to deal with the rejections. I, I feel bad for you. You need some real help. You need to get your own emotions and, and being under control so that you can be successful in your own space and you shouldn't be thinking about me. And on that positive note, that's the video of how I deal with the haters. So be well, I love you. Thanks for, thanks for listening, especially to haters because you listened more intently than most.